It's 22 minutes to midday. It's Saturday morning and we are going to talk now. We're going to talk movies and everything that is going on on the big screen at the moment and also uh, what's coming our way over the next month or so. And I'm delighted to say I'm joined by Mr. Collie McFadgeen. Good morning, Collie. Good morning, Rory. It's great to be back on the fastest month of all time. Or, well, it was for me because yeah. I'd be counting down the minutes till I'd be back on the show again. And we had loads of movies to talk about. And uh, mm. it's an exciting time for the cinema. And uh, I'm here with my minion friends, as you can see. And, I see uh, that. You really, you really go all out, don't you? I, I blend in, you know, it, it's it's not a coincidence that they went for the colours, I, I feel it was based on me, but we will get to Minions anyway, because let's face it, they are everywhere, you see it's, the ads everywhere. It's all about the Minions, of course. It's all, it's about, all about the Minions, minions. but well, I suppose first, let's look after, you know, a, a little bit older audience. Now, when we finished last week, the, the or last week, last month, what we were talking about was Elvis. And we yeah. were both kind of looking forward to and excited about Elvis. But I know myself that I was kind of hesitant a little bit about, you know, what sort of movie it was. Because we heard all these rumours. And it's made by Baz Luhrmann, who's never made, like, just a straight movie in his uh -huh. life. You know, uh -huh. when his version of uh, musical was Moulin Rouge, his verse, version of a, of a classic Shakespeare drama was Romeo and Juliet with rock music. So we weren't quite sure what sort of Elvis movie we were going to get. So we got it. We got it last week. And I have to say, Rory, it's, I thought it was terrific. Aha! Ab absolutely brilliant. All the fears. Because, you know, you want things to be good. I always try and look for a reason to like something yeah. rather than reason to knock it. But <clears throat> it really works. And I think if I'd known st at, at the start <clears throat> how different it was going to be, so, for example, we did know that a little bit of it, or quite a lot of it, is Elvis through the eyes of Colonel Tom Parker, much yeah. more than the Elvis story. And I think it's all the better for it. We've had movies before that are very much, you know, your classic biopic of he was born here. This is what happened when he was 13. This is what happened when he was 18. Mm -hmm. I think we've seen that before. And we kind of know, I think most people know the Elvis Presley story. So this yeah. is much more about <clears throat> how exciting it was. The opening scenes, now I don't know about you, I'm a big concert goer. I love to go to concerts. And the last couple of years have been tough without, without concerts. Mm -hmm. was, like, that's why, you know, when you're interviewing the, the, the chap beforehand, just that bit of being out on the road again, that if you were from a small town in the South of America, to see Elvis Presley come, and he was like fourth on the bill, with, you know, traditional country yeah. artists and see this guy stand up there and just the way he sang and the way he moved and he took mm. all the influences from the sort of African-American stars that all of these young people wouldn't have seen because of segregation, except that they were kept uh -huh. away from it. Yeah. And it reminded me of my first ever gig, which was probably slightly less cool, Bon Jovi and the RDS. But I remember standing there at 15 <laughs> years old, just looking up going, Oh my, why did nobody tell me about this before? <laughs> Standing there looking at the rock star going, I'm going to do that all the time, which I have. And um, <clears throat> some were better than others, I won't lie to you. But yeah, you yeah. Just, that feeling, that electricity in the air, yeah. and that's what it captures. And I don't know how accurate all of it is, but the spirit of all of it is accurate. And one of the funny things about it was, um, I was saying to you uh, last month that Priscilla Presley and Lisa Marie Presley both gave it a big thumbs up. Yeah, it, and got, I, it got the big endorsement from the family, which is always, uh, yeah. it's always a good sign Yeah, when the family uh, come out and say, <clears> you know what, this is bang on, this is exactly what we expected, this is what we wanted. Yeah, but what was really interesting about that, I heard since an interview with Tom Hanks where he said, so they're going to make the movie and everyone got COVID. So they had to stop. And in yeah. that time, <clears throat> his wife is uh, pals with Priscilla Presley and they got talking and she said, what, can I see the script? And she read the script and she goes, look, Colonel Tom Parker, I understand he did steal a load of Elvis's money, etc. I think we're safe to say that now on the radio. <laughs> but she said, you're playing him as a bad guy, but he wasn't a bad guy. There was a reason everyone trusted him with their money, etc. Mm -hmm. Because he charmed everyone when he was in the room. Everyone loved him. He was everyone's favourite uncle. Yeah. Now he was siphoning money out the door, but he was he was that guy. So they went and rewrote the whole movie based on that. And it's a much more interesting take than, he, you know, we've seen evil pop star manager before. I think every movie, Bohemian Rhapsody, Elton John's movie, all of them mm. have that. 
Mm-hmm. So it's much, it's much more interesting. But what I loved most is the concert scenes. And even in that, he mixes in a, a bit of Jack White. He mixes in a bit of Eminem. This stuff should not work. It should not work in the scenes. And it's abso- it does. absolutely electric. So exciting. So much fun. And we said this about Top Gun 2. And I didn't think it'd be this close that I'd be repeating myself about it. It was working for all audiences. So obviously there's lots of people who are Elvis fans and Elvis traditionalists. Well, that's been- that's what I was going to say to you. So this, obviously, it has, you know, something for the hardcore Elvis yeah. fans, you know, the, the true Elvis fans, but it also has something for the, the casual moviegoer, the okay. casual Elvis fan. Absolutely. The, the hardcore fans are going to love the comeback special. Go, that is shot for shot. That's amazing. But I think... You know, and there was a lot of uh, young people in cinema who finally got it. They saw those early concert scenes. And of course, they know Austin Butler from Disney. And mm-hmm. they saw that the early concert scenes, right? I get it now. I get why he was so fun and exciting. So absolutely well worth going. The only thing I would say is it's quite long. I, I maybe I found the last 10 minutes, you know, because you know where it's going. Yeah. And it was a bit sad. And I found it a little bit long. I would definitely go for a pee beforehand. There's, okay. there's, there's, there's my expert <laughs> advice, okay? Go All right, Julie, you know what I mean? Julie noted. Yes. <laughs> right, so that that's Elvis, okay? So that's been out now for what? About, about uh, one week. One oh, week. It's been out a week, okay. And it's doing well at the box office. As well. Oh, it, it, it's absolutely, uh, I think, uh, performing above aspirations. Because I, I think they knew Elvis is a brand, uh, you know, mm-hmm. they'll always get hardcore fans, even just to go and give out about it. Yeah. But I think it's the widespread appeal has really surprised them. And it's great. Brilliant. Okay, so that's Elvis. Top Gun, still flying still, high, pardon the pun. Still, still flying high, should be out of cinemas now, or at least on a sort of a, a lower schedule. But a wind still, down, yeah. It's, it, it's still going, and it's great because we've got those for, you know, for the older ones, and at the end, yeah. we're going to talk about movies for oh, oh, maybe slightly older audiences. But we've also got, you know, my pals here in the background, Open the SA. So let's get to the Minions, because there's okay. families all around going, yeah, Hurry up and it, get to the minions. <laughs> no, no, I think they're going, oh God, it's inevitable. I'm going to have to see the minions. And I, you know, I was thinking about this. I said, <laughs> look, I can just talk about the minions. I don't have to see it. It's a kids' movie and so on. I went, no, well, I'm a prof- I'm Before, a yep, before you say anything about yep. the minions, let's have a listen. Nothing is more important than this. We can't do anything alone. Find your tribe. <laughs> and never, ever, ever let them go. Good night. Good night. Yes, yes, yes. Good night. Good night. No. Minions, the rise of Gru in Cinemas Friday. Shouldn't work either, but, it, you know, it does work, doesn't it? <laughs> I'm going to say something really controversial now. I think the soundtrack to the Minions 2 is better than the Elvis soundtrack. And I love the Elvis soundtrack. But I will get to that, right? <laughs> So I said, I'm a professional. Yeah. I should go. Look, Rory has asked me to come on and talk about movies. I shouldn't talk about stuff that I ca- I could have seen, but I didn't. So I said, right, I'll go and see it. And I went to see it at 8 a.m. Uh, and, you know, that's not the time to see the movie. And I went, look, right. what, what my review was going to be. Already in my head, I said, what my review is going to be. Ah, look, it's the Minions. It's lovely. If you've got kids, they're going to like it. So I was in there for about two minutes. And it's opening credits, right? And there's a character, who's a French-speaking character, who has a lobster claw for an arm. And his name is Jean-Claude. And I went, okay, I like this already. <laughs> and and right. then I realized he's played by Jean-Claude Van Damme. And I was going, okay, you've got All me. right, that's I'm sold. I'm sold. I, I'm sold. I'm, I'm sold. in. Yeah. I'm in. From there on in, it's set in 1976. And they're having fun with it. This is the movie Austin Powers' gold member wishes it was. They're having so much fun. There's a bad guy called Bell Bottoms. They're just uh, enjoying themselves so much. As you said about the Minions singing along, you think it'd be kind of like when I was a little yeah. kid, I loved Pink and Perky, but this stuff would annoy me now. The funny voices and all that. No, all the way through the movie, singing the Carpenters, singing Cecilia by Simon and Garfunkel. I was going, how do I buy that version of it? <laughs> They're just funny, silly. Love and it. What's, Love the it. other thing that's important is they don't outstay their welcome. I said Elvis is long. This is an hour and 20 minutes, which is just the right time. Because I mean, yeah. you know, 
little people could go, but very little people who aren't used to the cinema can also yeah. enjoy it. So for yeah, for the limited attention spans, for for the mummies and daddies with the limited attention spans. Yeah, I well. think there's a lot of that who haven't <laughs> who haven't slept properly since yes. 2016. Exactly. <clears throat> they're going to joke, but they're also going to laugh their faces off. And as I said, there's jokes for the parents, but it's not above the jokes. It's not like a, a snarky joke or a rude joke. Yeah. It's just jokes everyone can enjoy in the way of. You know, from Laurel and Hardy to Spongebob, certain things are just funny. And like a little yellow creature slamming his head into the door mm. is just funny. And the other thing is, that's not easily done. There's so many bad <coughs> comedies out there. You yeah. have to be very clever to be this stupid. Like Stan Laurel was a genius, but he also was the idiot on the screen. And this, yeah. they really thought about this. I loved it. And it was the biggest surprise of the month since I talked to you that how much I enjoyed Minions. It's great fun. Good, clean fun, I think, is probably the verdict there. Absolutely. Yeah. And I would imagine now, I will only have to see it once. There'll be people out there going, oh, God, it's good. That means I'm going to have to go and see it five <laughs> times over the summer. <laughs> and then we're going to, you know, I, nobody buys DVDs anymore, but it'll be on streaming and I'll have the, the pajamas yeah. and the whole lot. Yes, uh -huh. you're going to be living with Minions for a long time, but it's way better. Of the summer... Uh, film so far like Lightyear is pretty good but it's yeah. no Toy Story this is by far the best we've had in ages it's just great great family fun perfect for the summer months especially if the weather stays like the summer months at the moment yeah and Minions is in theatres now right now yeah and right it's now. going to be here for a long time when we're on next month Minions we'll will still, still be, be talking about yeah, Minions I'm probably Lovely. top gun the way things are going. <laughs> right, okay, it's nine minutes to midday. We're going to go for a quick commercial break and we're going to come back. We're going to talk about Thor and uh, where the crawdads sing as well. We're going to talk about that, okay? Time for a quick commercial break. <sighs> Eight minutes to midday. We are talking movies on the Saturday Rewind. Carly McFadgen is with me, and we are now talking Thor making a return to cinemas on July 7th, I think. Yes, certainly is. Though on Thursday, of course. They wouldn't wait till Friday. It's Thursday. It has to be yeah, Thor. Yeah, you know, they're on <laughs> brand right there. So now, whatever about Minions and Elvis having you know, cult followings. There are some people now listening going, fantastic, there's another Marvel movie out. And there's other people going, oh God, there's another Marvel movie out. Because we're at movie 29. This is the mm. fourth standalone Thor movie. I think it's like the 10th time Chris Hemsworth has played Thor. So I think if you're not in by now, you're probably never going to be in. Although when you look at the cast for this, it is something stunning. There's five Oscar winners in the cast alone. Right? Mm. Uh, so we've got Christian Bale, who said he was never going to do a comic book movie again and got sent the script to this one and went, yeah, okay. I'm in. He, I, I'm in. The, he plays the bad guy. So after the Avengers, Thor is retired. He's not interested anymore. He's all zen and hippie-ish. And next thing, this guy called Gore, who is a god killer, and he's rampaging through the universe. Again, there's people now going, you're either rolling their eyes or putting up their sleeves <laughs> to book, book online. So, But it's also made by uh, Taika Waititi, who made the last one, who's mm. the genius behind things like uh, what we do in the shadows and so on. And brought out this sort of, I know we shouldn't mention New Zealand today because, you know, of the rugby and so on. Mm -hmm. But he brought this sort of key. Yeah, so we'll move over that. But we brought that sort <laughs> of dry Kiwi wit that works so well. So yeah. you've got all the spectacular Disney Marvel spectacular stuff. And then you've just got really good jokes that, that a, an executive at Disney would never come up with. It's going to be massive, no matter what anyone says. And I think the thing about Thor and all the Marvel movies is people are so interest about where the story is going to go there's going to be some secret reveal there always is in a marvel movie mm -hmm. so they're very clever about that so everyone rushes to see it the first week or two because they don't want spoilers spoilers yeah. are verboten it's the worst thing you could do to a thor fan well you said it's movie number 29 yeah. in this marvel expanded universe or yeah. whatever it's called or cinematic universe is there is there a little bit of marvel fatigue starting to creep and we saw it with star wars and you know there was nowhere near 29 well there's a lot of star wars but yeah you know there is star wars fatigue out there now where it just doesn't pack the same punch as it did 
15, 20 years ago. Is that happening with Marvel? I, I agree, but I think one of the things they've done that's really clever, and it hasn't always worked, is they've got in all of these uh, left field choices. So we had the Eternals. It was made by the same person who made mm. Nomadland. That is a mad choice yeah. to, as a director. This is this is much a comedy, but also the guys from Guardians of the Galaxy are in. So it's kind of an Avengers like movie. So they keep on bringing all these people in. They yeah. brought that one of the last movies, Shang Chi. One of the things, you know, it was the first time there was a mostly Asian cast, American Asian cast in a big mm. blockbuster. So what they're doing is they're trying to avoid Marvel fatigue. Now, I think for just your cinema goer, there might be a little bit of that. But one of they keep on mixing up the stories. They keep on bringing in new people all the time. So it's not just like as a kid, I loved James Bond. But even I knew when I went to see Octopussy in the cinema going, uh, Roger Moore... Uh, probably isn't a superhero anymore, you know? Yeah. So what yeah, they keep yeah, on yeah. doing is mixing it up. People have gone. And the other thing that's important, I think, which didn't happen enough in Star Wars, big characters die in the Marvel Universe. Yeah, Things everyone happen. is disposable and yeah, sensible, no, yeah. <clears throat> especially when their wage bill gets really high, I think. Yeah. <laughs> I think you get much more disposable. There's a tip for you the next time you yeah. negotiate your contract for Rory with yeah. Ireland. <laughs> just, just be careful. Just, be careful. Yeah, just play it safe. You're gone. Stroke yeah, of a yeah, pen. Yeah. Goodbye. <laughs> and, and I think that is the way they've kept it up. Now, the one thing is they hit a, they hit the ground like like the Pixar people. The more mm. movies you make, the more chance there is of the odd dud. But it, okay. it has to be said, the worst mo Marvel movies and probably Iron Man two and so on. As when when little Collie was running around Anagre on his summer holidays, uh, he would have little Collie. Yeah, with no shoes on, <laughs> he would have he would have killed to see the worst of these movies because okay. I was I loved comic books and we couldn't make something like this. So I think maybe for the general public, and I definitely would think for the critics. That's why Doctor Strange did not do well in the critics' choices. Mm -hmm. They got very bad reviews. Audiences loved it yeah. because critics are looking for something different, whereas this is part of an ongoing story for other people. Also, the TV shows have done very well. Yeah, they have. Loki, yeah. Loki particularly with Thor. So I think this, I think it'll be a mega hit. We have two minutes left. Okay. Very quickly, we'll talk about where the crawdads sing. Okay, so a huge novel, which I must admit, I'm a big reader, but I haven't read. This is uh, a story. It's, it's a young woman played by Daisy Edgar Jones, who we'll know mm. from normal people. Yeah. She kind of raised herself in the swamps of, of Louisiana, uh, she's an outsider, she's considered a weirdo, but she gets involved with a local boy who's very popular. <clears throat> Suddenly, he's found dead, and of course the town folk all turn to blame at her. It's been a huge novel, and uh -huh. they're expecting it to be a, a, a massive book. I can't wait to see it. I'm just not sure whether I should read the book or not first. And finally, just there's a new, also an Irish movie, because I love to plug Irish movies, mm -hmm. called yeah. Joyride. It stars Olivia Coleman as a young woman who... Uh, has, has just had a baby, isn't sure what to do, ends up in a taxi that's been stolen by a young 12-year-old and they head off around Ireland. I've just seen the trailer wow. th this morning and I just thought it looks brilliant. And we've had a good time for Irish movies. Uh, stuff like on Colleen Kuhn and Arox have done really well in Irish cinemas. So it'd be brilliant to see another Irish movie. As much as we love Thor, as much as we love Minions, it would be great to see an Irish movie do really well. Of course, well too. of course. That's what we want to see. Colly, thanks as always. We will talk to you next month. Can you believe it will be into August? No. But we will talk. I know, I know. Well, listen, we'll talk to you uh, next month. We'll talk about uh, Thor and how it's doing uh, at the theatres and Minions, of course. We'll still be talking <laughs> about Minions. And uh, we'll talk about what's coming up uh, between August and September as well. Colleen McFadgeen, thank you so much for joining me this morning. See you at the movies. We'll talk Bye. to you soon. All right, take care. Bye-bye. Colleen McFadgeen there. And that's where we wrap up the Saturday Morning Rewind for this Saturday morning.